and will be assisted by Edward Kabagambe and James Biaruhanga. Yes, James Biaruhanga across the pitch. And there you have Jonathan Luhoni on the screen. Very young man, but he has made his mark as one of the most lethal wingers in the league. And to get us underway is Henry Sekuye kicking the ball from, from right on your screen to left for the Rhinos to defend. And he overcooks it, sending it all the way into touching goal. And we shall be back to the halfway line for a scrum feed by the Rhinos. My name is Anesta Kurebi Runji. Today I will be alongside Ruben Chihumro for commentary as always. And what a beautiful day we have here, Ruben. Yeah, perfect weather for rugby. Um, and uh, I know a lot of people have been looking at Cobbs Pirates, but this particular one is also an interesting encounter. And I'm very, very eager to see how the, the two youthful sides match it up. Uh, Impis has been uh, keeping this group together for quite a while, as uh, the Rhinos, in stark contrast, have actually been building a very, very youthful team. And it seems to be coming alive, but still, there seems to be a lot of promise and potential on their end. Not the kind of start that Impis would want there by uh, Henry Sequoia with a long kick that goes dead into touch. Now giving the fast attacking opportunity to uh, the Rhinos as Poo Kalunji fits the ball, but a very, very big scrum there by Impis. Kalunji there looking for the gap. Very, very good tackle there by Kennedy Muhumuza as uh, Rhinos get the opportunity to visit the Impis half fast. Today we're, we're seeing the, uh, the absence of Ivan Chirabo, so Musa Bulega will be having the responsibility to control the troops of the Rhinos. He'll be wearing their shirt number 10 as the action continually begins to go. Patient play there by the Rhinos, trying to suck in the defense. And there, Musa Bulega, we have seen him try to test the attack, the defense of the, the Impis. Patient play, Poo Kalunji. You can see the use of physicality. The forwards um, of the Rhinos are really, really a big cog in the way they have been playing thus far. They have won one, they have lost one, but they did not lose it. Uh, by a big margin, losing 11-10 in Entebbe last weekend. Now they have the opportunity to maybe get another win at home. Can they be able to get the extras as a uh, referee calls for a knock-on there? It's going to be the, the second scrum of the game and uh, in a very, very encouraging uh, position for the Rhinos. Yeah, very um, good defense from, from Impis to turn over that ball, but it was lost forward by uh, Gabriel Bejuka there. But uh, also interesting uh, start to the game by, by Rhinos attacking in the close quarters of the game in the middle between the 15 uh, meter territory. And they now get a chance to do it again with another scrum just about 10 meters ahead. Do they go to the blind side where Owen Kinera is now joining uh, the line or do they go to the open side where the midfield is waiting? And there, Tembo Jerry goes to the blind side. And now Musa Bulega sells a dummy on Jonathan Luhoni, but he's brought down by a retreating flanker. And now, Pul Kalunji, quick ball out to Jerry Tembo, throws a loose ball to his uh, number two, and it's not well gathered. But uh, Sebi Dandi is there to pick up the scraps. Now, Pul Kalunji again, can he make a better pass for his teammates? Rhinos in attack now, breaking one tackle goes goes Chisuze and now Rhinos are well inside the Impis 22. Slow ball this time. Tembo to pick on that PD. Sebidand is shaping up to take it again also. Doesn't gain any ground but the ball is still on the Rhinos side. They are slowly but surely pounding on the Impis door at the first points of this game. Taco by Gabi. No hands! Luka. No hands! Leave are it! There, trying to yeah. turn over that ball, but unsuccessfully. Impis defending on their knees. Very good carry. Taco now! Carry there by Roll Jerry Tembro. Gain even more ground for the, for the okay. Rhinos. Roll and now Paul Kalunji pulls it out, does not know which direction to go. He chooses to play with Advanced David Shima, who is arrested. Okay by uh, Stallone high, Camden, bro. but that was a high tackle, says center referee Umar Balikanda, and now playing advantage. This is a free play for the Rhinos. Owen Kinyera, the new signing from Warriors. Ball goes out wide to Kwebiha. He is cutting on to the inside, advantage pulled down, but there's guys, no eh? advantage gained Aye. in both territory and possession. Trove, eh? And the Rhinos now have a chance for points. Do they go to okay. the corner? 
or they throw. kick for points. Okay, and I mean, now, I think the decision has just been made. Okay. The kicking tee comes in. Hit. We shall be having our first shot for points okay. in this cracking encounter between the Rhinos and the, and the Impis. That's okay. Silence has the entire Legends Rugby ground respect the kicker. Can he be able to repay them with something? Unfortunately, okay. his kick is short, short. so the score okay. remains as is, and it's going to be a 22 meter drop out there for. The yeah. impis, they get out of jail on that one, having not conceded um, the first point of this particular game. Remember, Saturday is a rugby day, so you have to make sure that um, wherever you are, if you cannot make your way to Legends Rugby Grounds to enjoy a Nile special while you're guys, watching eh? the rugby, then uh, Kawo Sports has you covered. Tell yeah. a friend to tell a friend to tell the world, and uh, just make sure that you're stocked up on your Nile special and you have enough data because a lot of action is happening as Puka Lunji effects a counter attack, loses his balance, and tries to go for the chicken wing offload, but unfortunately, the offload goes into touch. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Puka Lunji could have done much better there with that phase of play. Just right to go alone. And uh, yeah. once he realizes that the door has been shut on him, he yeah. throws a rather uh. unnecessary offload onto the floor. And uh, he's, he's given Impis a free hey, position here. Why? Ten, eh? I felt he could have played with his, uh, with his other back three players. Okay. Uh, that's in Get Oil in. at 15. Stay, and guys, eh? To the wing. But uh, he chose to go alone on the short side. And now Impis have a chance to throw the ball at the line out. Turned over, over by the right and now Billy or ten in possession. Paul Kalonji gets a chance now to redeem himself. Throws the ball to Jerry Tembo who finds Davis Shima and Davis Shima with a quick ball out to the Rhinos and they're running right with this one. Very good defense from the That's Impis, but the ball has been okay. lost forward. Okay. In the tackle, says Umar Balikanda. Uh, but what a, what a quick ball man. by that young man there, Davis Shimwa, in the midfield. A quick ball out to set the two men on his outside, running in open yeah, space. And uh, it had to be the recovering defenders on, on the impis out wide, led by yeah, Jonathan Lohoni, to stop them from gaining any territory. Yeah. Impis have possession, but uh, they're still playing well inside their own half. But let's see now what Edmund Moir, Edmund Wire, who is starting at 10, with Henry Sapir at 15, will do Set. this first play. Do they yeah, hold it. opt hold to it. kick hold it. Hold or do they opt to kay. play it out wide with the experienced uh, players they hold. have on their arsenal? Hold. Kennedy Muhunza does not want to play with his number 10. That's a tackle away. To the blind side. Advantage high. Kay. High tackle says Balikanda. High tackle, guys. Eh? High. And now, surely, Edmund Wire will be getting. A chance to play the ball okay. and find some touch for Impis well inside the Rhinos' territory. Okay. Impis have had to innovate and rebrand themselves after last weekend. Edmond Wire had been, uh, I could say, not as efficient as he could have been on defense against the Cobbs, so he missed last weekend. But with the injury of Keith Weraga, who is now on the bench, he returns to the starting fold at number 10. And uh, Henry Sequier, the more preferred number okay. 10, is in an unfamiliar fullback position. Wait, 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 wait. Guys, eh? The Rhinos, like uh, hey, Ruben Rhinos. said earlier, uh, Ivan Chino is on Push. the sideline. He's not even going to play today. No, just and, uh, after this phase, eh? Watching okay, come in. on as his team tussle it out. The young men tussle it out here on the touchline. Very Over. well won by Impis on the breakdown. And that is Ariho Mohun is a... Uh, Trying to break free from Billy Ochen, but he's tackled okay. strong. Okay. And possession has been turned over. We've struggled to see uh, teams keep possession more than uh, Efezo to Ruben. Uh, 
what could the situation be? Is it some butterfingers or is it some uh, butterflies or some uh, still shaky fingers uh, in the early times of this one? Yeah, I think it's a case of nerves, um, the first game of the day and Ali Kikov, so uh, a, a set of two youngsters that are trying to size each other up. They both know how vital this game is uh, as for those that also, they actually, as we are seeing, David Shimwa there with a very, very good carry. He's, and he's still going. He, he could have uh, gotten around um, 20 meters there in the way he carried that ball. And uh, that is Ochen Billy to Owen Kinyera. Owen Kinyera dances Advantage back into contact, high. but he seems, yes, he has been tackled high by Ga uh, Gabriel Mugabe. So it's going to be advantage to the Rhinos. Rhinos still trying to con uh, control proceedings at the moment. Um, patiently waiting as Pul Kalunji tries to snipe through a gap characteristic of a number nine okay. who knows what yeah, he's doing and uh, the referee deems advantage tackle. not to yes. have been gained so it's going to come back Mark. to the, the penalty yeah. infringement spot can they be able to uh, okay. go for a kick or will they be uh, eh? kicking for touch let us see what the, the, the captains will be calling in this particular instance and you okay. can see their ball <coughs> pointing Hold to it. the posts uh, so it is going to be Another kickable opportunity, and it is, uh, um, is standing twice, eh? number Jacob 10, Musa Bulega, who down, eh? is going to attempt his second kick of the day. For those that are not familiar with the colors of the teams, um, Rhinos, the home team, is putting on their, their flashy jersey with the stars at the back, yellow black predominantly and uh, you can see the white stars for those uh, that are not familiar with what Impis is wearing they are currently putting on their away kit which is shades of green and white as you can see and uh, Musa Bulega trying to line up his kicker to his kick rather and uh, shot Dire Play the direction was good, but the distance wasn't good. And hey, Edmond stop. Wire applies stop. violence to that ball, trying to kick it away as much as possible. Advantage. And a bit of miscommunication between Shimo and his fullback. Penalty no there ball, for no. uh, for the MPC. A change of fortune from a defensive exit no ball, no to eh? now an attacking penalty. penalty. He's in front of the ball and he's killing the advantage. Yeah, very good okay. call there from uh, no Omar Balikanda. Okay. Musa Bulega knocks the ball forward, but uh, it is regarded up, by Davis Shimo after that okay. poor communication. No, no, no. And Nine he gives away a free penalty for Impis, who are from their own try area with just one punt of the ball. Ed Bonwire sends them halfway. And now he has sent them deep inside the 22, but he fails fine touch and finds Owen Kinyera, the more experienced okay. of the backs from the Rhinos. He finds touch, and there's still more poor communication from both, time, okay. from both teams as. Uh, Jerome Tasiko and Henry Sekuye collide on that regathering. They give away another penalty. Rhinos. Owen Kinyera making it clear that he is going to kick this time. I watched him um, in the match warm up as I did my pitch inspection today and he was kicking well. Musa Blega was, but uh, I felt. Uh, Aaron Kinyera was an option for, for the boot. But uh, the Rhinos have stuck with their kicking option on this one. It's just that now it's Emmanuel Kwebikanga who has taken kicking duties from Musa Bulega. They have three options. I thought it would be Owen Kinyera, but let's see what Kwebikanga will, will do with this opportunity. Slices it very well, <laughs> but it lacks the direction. And for the third time in this one, Rhinos have failed to split the uprights and put some points on the board. Two different kickers, three kicking opportunities, but no points on the board for the Rhinos. Hey this might come to hurt them out. in a game Don't which usually line, eh? goes down to the wire. Impis won the last one, the last encounter between these two teams, 19-20 here at Legends okay. Rugby Ground. Okay. Straight out. Straight out. Okay. And you can see even option. on the other side, Line out, the scrum. kicking options for, okay. for Impis are not exactly as efficient as well as Edmund Wire puts it straight out from the 22 drop, which means the Rhinos have an option to okay. go for the line out where Back. the ball went out or a scrum where the kick was made. And the wiser decision on any day would be to go for that scrum though. Just one step in. 
Line is the mark, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay. Both teams yet to assert yeah. their dominance in the scrum. Discipline, guys, eh? Okay. Crowd! But Rhinos have had Bye. the advantage of feeding in the ball. Hold it there, guys. Hold it. All the scrums okay. that they have had, that we have had so far in this yeah. Stable and slow yeah. for Paul Kalonji out, out to direct play. to Davis Shima, who sells a dummy and goes back into the traffic. Tackle now! By Robert Sentongo. Paul Kalonji slow, finds Billy Ochen running the short line, who is now Tackle isolated. Relief. Tackled. Okay. Rhinos well inside the 22. Paul Kalonji is undecisive again at that breakdown, but Good. he finds okay. that Alvin Utwama, eh? but he okay. has thrown a forward pass. So we have a scrum. And so it will be a scrum for Impis, just inside their own 22. I think, um, Ruben, watching the number nine that play for Rhinos, he approaches the breakdown, uh, not sure where he wants to send the ball and has to first scan and look around. It is giving Impis an opportunity to realign and get to know which direction the ball is going to take, which is uh, allowing them to defend much, much better than the Rhinos would have hoped with the beautiful attacking platforms that they are getting. Yeah, okay. definitely a case of uh, um, inexperience. They're the young, vibrant uh, Kalunji, but still has Set. a few things to really um, fine-tune with it, guys, the way eh? he plays the game, Hold but it. he's one surely for the future, and I'm sure that is one of the hey, things set. that Timothy Bulotti, a uh, former scrum of all the Rhinos as well, will be like, uh, noting and uh, communicating to him about, as we're seeing Jonathan Mahoney, um trying Away. to get into some contact okay. and set up the ball for the impis to... That's um, second back. Try to get out of their own half and a very, very big kick there by Edmund yeah. Wire. Does he get the okay. distance that he wants? Um, uh, we could see a case of, uh, yes, he kicked. It was the ball. The ball was outside the 22 meter mark and uh, passed back inside the 22. And Edmund Wire, instead of keeping the ball on the pitch, he kicked it straight out. That means that you go back to the mark exactly where you kicked from. That is a lot of territory lost and a very, very attacking platform there for uh, the Rhinos. Edmund Wire not having the best of days off the boot in open play. He sent the last 22 meter drop straight out. And this time, even after hearing from the referee that uh, the ball is taken back inside the game, to the hook six straight out. And Rhinos are back knocking at their door. That's a tackle. Okay, play on. Play on. Tackle now. Isolated Taco. again is Francis Fukundani no on a big carry. This time Jeremy Tembo to pick the ball for the Rhinos finds Bayer Turnover Odong. Is okay. Turnover is good, no says hands. the referee. No and hands. now no let's see okay. if okay. Impis can clear their line. Edmond Wire in the pocket. Robert Sentongo That's finds him. Let's see if he can okay. hoof okay. it much better this time. He does. Finds Hold the brass behind, okay. behind Emmanuel Kwebikanga. And Musa Bulega, Emmanuel Kwebikanga, okay. and Apananda, it, the guys. forwards need to yeah. retreat. He puts them on side. Okay. Now, Jerome Tasiku, on to Jonathan nice. Lohoni. In front. Okay. And nice. yes, there's the advantage. Zakaria yeah. Ball needs to retreat behind the okay. kicker if he is to take a part in the game. And now, Jerome Tasiku yeah. finds Stallone Arenaito on the quick restart into the Rhinos half, the Impis goal. The ball has been Taco turned now. over. No, 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 no. Your feet. Advantage. Okay. Now Rhinos playing advantage of that turnover. Okay. Sevi Dandy off the boot. Does he have the legs to go past? Okay. Jonathan Lohoni, no, he doesn't. And now Henry Sequie okay. is okay. trying to outpace okay. Alvin Lutwama, but he is tackled. Okay. And the Rhinos advantage of that okay. breakdown. You can see the, the lack of leadership okay. in the Rhinos uh, department there. Have your number four going off. No, 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 no. Where? When he kicked. No, I penalized him for offside under 10 meter low, not offside in front of the kicker. Okay? So they are different. Okay? Captain Kennedy Mahomes are trying to get Balikanda's calls right. There with the Rhinos playing advantage, but I was talking about the lack of leadership in the Rhinos team. They are not satisfied with how their kickers are playing today. And uh, you could hear David Shimwa, the youngster, trying to take the reins. 
Paul Kalonji Ryan calling Ryan the shot the and he had the final call uh, opting to go for, for touch. Rhinos numbers. Now Five, can the Rhinos Dale. be able to seal this one and ensure that that was the right decision. Sebi Dandi throws over. the loose ball for Arnold Kalonji to pick and it is turned over okay. by Impis. Now. No hands, no hands, no hands. Hey, hey. Leave it. Back. Back. Slow ball picked by the front row, Edmond Wire, Imp is living dangerously here, Davis on. Shimwa with the tackle on Stallonary Knight, the on. referee says play Damn on, looked like the ball was slapped forward in the tackle, but it is open play, and now Musa Bulega with Kwebi Kango on his outside, Damn is on Henry Sequia, bumps you roll away. Into, away. It, okay. into David Aniku, yeah. and now the rack is secured right just there. outside the gate, <laughs> entering from the side is David Aniku, and Umar Balikanda will have a word with the players. He will have a word with Kennedy Muhumiza. We're having so many penalty infringements. Talk to your team to calm down, okay? Okay? Yeah. Okay? Tell them to calm down, okay? And there goes the warning to Kennedy Muhumiza and ultimately Impis. Just time is up. Time is up, guys. For repeated penalty infringements. This is the final warning. I think the next man to commit a penalty will be going to the scene bin here. Okay. Yeah, that, that was definitely cynical from Kennedy Momoza as the, the Rhinos big man, Francis Mukundane, trying to get some Away. extra meters there. Can he be able to uh, break that Impis defensive wall? And that is his Stop opposite now, his uh, opposite prop, uh, Joshua Obol, who also tries to get his attempt. And long ball to Musa Bulega, who also throws a long one. Billy Chen. And Billy Chen, finally, they break through the Impis defense. And it is the first try of the game to the Rhinos, and it is Billy Chen scoring the okay. try there. J just give him space. Um, there could be a case of an space. injury there. Um, uh, scored the try, but there is, uh, he, he gets a bit of pain for all the efforts that he had to put in. We hope it's not that serious. Um, could be a shoulder, uh, shoulder injury, as uh, we're seeing the medical team coming to be able to... Um, to really help out. As we're seeing Emmanuel Katuntu at the far end, um, trying to talk to the team, trying to talk to Jonathan Luhoni. Yeah. yeah, but you could see the brilliance. I think it was going to, it was going to reach a certain point where um, uh, maybe Coach Marshall Chumkam was going to become worried that with all that possession they were having, they had not yet put any points on board. So this will be, I think, uh, a sigh of relief for him as uh, the Rhinos finally take some charge in this game and put some points on board. The conversion going through... Unfortunately, Wonder direction guys, eh? is Wonder is break. not good, so that uh, the score remains at five. Oh, and Kinyara there attempting to kick. Um, he has quite a boot on him if he can be able to Wonder. get his bearings right, and a lot of responsibility there um, for him in his new side now, moving uh, just from the Warriors who also share the home ground here with the Rhinos. A beautiful try, typical Rhinos try as we head into the first water break of this weekend it's the first kickoff we have three other games happening across Kampala and Jinja but the Rhinos have taken an early lead in this one 5-0 try scored by Billy Ochen who has hurt his own shoulder in that attempt but uh, it was a free kick and tapped by Francis Mukundane and then the next phase was carried by Joshua Ball at that point the Impis defense had been sucked in enough, and Paul Kalonji finding Musa Bulega on the mispass, who sent it straight out to Billy Ochen to hit that gap, and he was able to find some space in the middle and touch down for the first point of the game. We have some action happening in Ginger. It is the Ginger Hippos taking on Heathens. I crunch much. Uh, one that we expect to be as tight as can possibly be Heathens were victorious in the Lions Cup last weekend against Cobbs, while uh, the Ginger Hippos were able to outsmart and overpower the Warriors 46-5 at home. They are playing their second home game this season of four in a row. And the other early kickoff that we have is the Mongas taking on the Warriors. at the House of Pain in Entebbe. A 
What does it take to win gold? Ours is the result of what we put in. Only the best ingredients and only the freshest water drawn from the source. What then does it take to win 21 gold awards? A special kind of consistency, one we've observed since 1956 to deliver a distinctly Ugandan taste. That is what makes Nile special. A beer truly made of Uganda, unmatched in quality and unmatched in gold. One beer, 21 Mond Selection Quality Awards. The true Ugandan reward from the source. Alcohol isn't for sale to persons under the age of 18. Please drink responsibly. Back from the water break, kicking duties shift from Henry Nsekuye to Edmond Wire, who finds Musa Bolega, and Musa Bolega will clear his line comfortably. For a line out just at the 10 meter line, but inside they have. Yeah, after that water break, I'm sure much needed for the team to be able to also, on top of getting refreshments, have a bit of a, uh, feedback from the, their uh, respective management teams. Uh, Timothy Bolotti and his uh, head coach, uh, Marshall Trum, come on the other side, Emmanuel Katuntu and his assistant, uh, Cyrus Sebuliba. Both coaches have uh, interestingly uh, featured for their teams and they are servants of the clubs and they are well aware of what That's is expected from the teams. Also seeing a very, very big tackle there. Very big tackle by Kevin Ampeire, but um, it was a case of uh, not rolling away in time. I know Kalunji off his feet there. Um, very good tackle, but then the player arriving at the breakdown was off his feet and with hands in the rock, gives away an easy penalty for Henry Sequia to put, to get the scoreboard ticking for Impis. But you saw that line out, uh, uh, Ruben. Impis seemed not to have found a solution to their line out was. Good for yeah. Everett this time, uh, starting ahead of of, uh, of of Amos Asimire, who is out of the squad all all through. Um, do you really think that uh, Impis will find a break in uh, this uh, lineout wars? Yeah, I, I I think it will all have to go down to consistency at this point. Uh, uh, just. I can say luckily or unluckily, depending on where you stand, um, they just have to find a way of doing it and just figuring it out somehow. Because now they don't have time to get all the practice done. You're already in the season, you're already in the game. As we are seeing, Henry Nsekuye, distance Beauty. and direction. That's a good Check. kick. <laughs> very, very good kick. The Impis get their first opportunity for points and they take it yeah, very, very, very well. It was in the tuck, huh? I and think that is one thing that um, I think... Oh yeah, some clarity to to Joshua Ball that uh, the player arriving at the breakdown wasn't the tackler, and so he needed to stay on his feet, and that's how uh, Henry Sekuye was able when to put ready? some points on the board for Impis. But uh, what what a kick that was! Yeah, very very brilliant kick. Um, I, from what I observed last weekend, uh, Henry um, has, didn't seem to have the, the the distance in him, but he seems to have found the distance that for ball? his kicks as uh, no, Sauna no, 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 gathers. And uh, patient play there by That's Jerome Tassi, who is at uh, scrum off today. Edmund yeah, Wire yet again with another big kick. And uh, Paul yeah. Kalunji. Let's see if he can do better this time. Chooses to play with his teammates. No, he goes alone. Throws a long pass out to Billy Oten with the ball. He's, oh, oh, that looked like a tip advantage. tackle. Oh, yes, it's advantage against the impis. And I think for that dangerous tackle, Billy Oten who had injured okay. his shoulder okay. Guys, eh? will be worried Captain. about his safety yes. there. Kennedy so Mahomza is being called it's in. It's clear over the horizontal side, but there's no level of danger, so we are going to just play a penalty, okay? No cards, just a penalty, okay? Yeah, okay. Is oh, yeah, this is okay? very, so very so lucky not the to get the card there saying card, just a penalty for me. Okay? that tackle <laughs> over the horizontal, just getting a yellow card. Someone was... <laughs> Going to go to the bin there had uh, Balikanda been as strict as ever. And now Impis failed to find touch. Jerome Tasiku offloads to Henry Sequia. He sends okay. it out. Yeah. He's just outside the 22. Still a line out for, for the Rhinos, but not the targets they had hoped to achieve with that uh, over ambitious kick. Yeah, overly ambitious there from the kicker to get a l too much distance. And sometimes you just have to get as much as you can without having to do too much. As uh, we're seeing get another attacking set piece there for the Rhinos. 
But the impis are really, really um, riding their luck short. As uh, the referee tries to communicate, and we are seeing a bit of uh, unhappy faces there between the, the, between the camps. Timothy Bulotti and the Rhinos technical bench saying that those tackles were not safe at all. They are yeah, and I know Pizza has come on um, for Billy Ochen. Uh, yeah, that was a dangerous tackle to be honest. Someone had to be sent off. And uh, it was Kennedy Muhumza, so as captain he was lucky not to be sent off for that dangerous tackle. And Arnold Kiza, who was the Rhinos captain in 2019-2020, makes his return to active rugby having missed most of the seven series. As Paul Kalonji digs in for the ball after the Rhinos have had one, they will line out and now they're trying to get extra meters, trying to be able to suck in that defense and see how they can be able to play uh, create the space. And Owen Kinyera with the interesting grabber, does uh, uh, Emma Kwebikanga have the legs to go all the way, but unfortunately the ball goes um, dead. So it's going to be, I think, back to the... Uh, you can see the Rhinos There's a call, there's a call from... Uh, they were playing advantage, so... An offside here. There's a decision to make. Another advantage there for side entry at the most. Advantage offside and, the and advantage so which one do you want? Uh, yeah. side yeah. entry yeah. and also yeah. advantage yeah. for the okay. dead ball. So penalty here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. But I think it always goes back for to the, the penalty yeah. to the original the offense. The, mall, eh? the original offense you already stands its ground. You have the options. You can choose where you want the penalty to be, the one that you want to take, and they have opted for the one at the end of that mall for side okay. entry. Do they go to do they go for touch or mark, do they mark, go for mark. points? Ultimately, it would have been closer to get that uh, scrum at the five meter line for ball in touch in goal. But they have decided to do a quick restart there with Paul Kalunji marshalling the forwards in. He finds Zakaria ball on that short line. The Rhinos continue to attack. And there goes by our dong. Well secured by the Rhinos. Sebi Dandi is at the back of it, he moves on to secure the rack, and now more advantage, Sedia, Emmanuel Sedia Bane is offside. Rhinos playing advantage, surely for repeated infringement, somebody is going to go to the bin as Paul Kalunji sends it out wide to the box. Davis Shima for the second time running decides to go all himself, fends off two men, Edmund Wire inclusive, the youngster is making the old man pay heavily, but there's no advantage gained, and Musa Bulega is going for the quick restart on this one, but Paul Kalunji snatches it from him. I think Paul Kalunji will do a quick restart. Yes, he does. There's Alvin Lutuama on the outside. Doesn't need him. He's brought down just short of the try area And the forwards are back to pound on the impis gate. Still short, says Umar Balikanda. Impis defending for their lives now. It changes from a two-point game to a try converted. And now, Jack Joshua Ball carrying a strong Stop front row there. Okay. Well on. secured. Paul Kalunji misses. Davis Shima finds Arnold Kiza. Arnold Kiza throws a high ball for Emmanuel Kwebikanga who loses it okay. forward. Okay. And now Impis will be very lucky to survive. Okay. Ending that phase without conceding points or even sent, having a man sent to the bin. Yeah, um, I was actually about to talk about that. So many infringements there. The discipline of the impis is not really good. And at some point, we, we, will, we might be seeing um, someone going on to, uh, into the sin bin if this trend doesn't change. But the Rhinos will be very disappointed in themselves for having such an opportunity and not utilizing it to the, uh, to the maximum. If this, I was felt like if this was Monopoly, what yes, Arnold Chiesa did is uh, get out of jail free card <laughs> for impis uh, to survive... The game okay. turning Second from a two-point game to a seven-point game. Okay. Yeah, they, they really could have made this a lot better for themselves. I felt like they shouldn't have um, hurried to take the ball Fine. out of uh, uh, the pick-and-drive situation, That's but they, they did that, and, and no, the, when the ball no. went to the box, they lost the ball. Emakwe Wikanga, unfortunately, not having his uh, handling skills right at that moment, as Edmond Wire with another one of his lofty kicks to try and get the impis out of jail. They have played much of this first stuff in their half, so they have been really condemned to a lot of defending. The Rhinos, on the other hand, have been attacking the most, but only have five points to show for it after three unconverted penalties and uh, one try that was scored. So you could say they are Not converted as well. 
Like yeah, the, the, the efficiency is not as they would want it, and I'm sure that is something that especially the Bucks coach, uh, Timothy Bolotti, will be scratching his head, head over on how they can be able to rectify such, such mistakes. Yeah. Well, lost forward at that scrum. At that line out, as uh, Rhinos attempted to throw a true ball. And it's Knock even messy a business okay. on, on the ins on the following the following breakdown. So it's a scrum feed for Impis just on the 22. There will be some clarification from Umar Balikanda to Edmond Wire whether the ball is inside okay. the 22. I think as a number nine, I have played number nine, so I think those are some of the questions you'll need Five. to ask the referee. Am I inside my 22 Set. or am I outside to know whether you your kicker you is it? going to send it straight out or make sure yeah. that you find some grass on the pitch? But there's no need for doing that as uh, Kennedy Mahomes carries on that eight pick and finds Stallone Camden or Ari Knightley. And now Impis are attacking in very good territory. Tackle through now. <laughs> Get on. Through Philip Walker, through Roland Wokorach. <laughs> uh, we have a Wokorach on pitch today. And uh, it's a new, Come he's on. making his debut. I, I talked about him. I, I think we'll need to get some clarity whether he is of any relation to Michael and Philip Wokorach, uh, this young man called Roland Wokorach, with that uh, strong carry that put Impis just inside the 10. Yeah, a lot of responsibility for the young man in this particular g game being given uh, the th uh, starting sh 13 shot. Okay. Uh, Roland Wokorach, uh, another <laughs> Wokorach playing 13 in Uganda. Um, and uh, yet again, wow. Impis are unable to even use their attacking platforms to get out of their own half. So that is something that uh, Emmanuel Katuntu and uh, especially the Bucks coach Cyrus uh, Sebuliba will be worried about because every time the, the, there's a platform uh, created by, by the forwards, the Bucks can't seem to really find any, any ground gained and then there is sometimes a, a case of panic kicking where they kick the ball away and then putting the Rhinos back in, in the contention as a very big scrum there and Emmanuel Sedavane with a quick start looking for any gap he can be able to get his tackled on the second attempt and uh, there are the Impis trying to set up a particular play. You could say there's a bit of uh, infringement there by the Rhinos but the referee lets it slide. And Davis Shimwa misses the tackle. tackle. And you could say it was no, a no, case of two no, strangers no. bypassing each other as Jerome Tasiku picks, feeds the ball to Henry Sekuye. Interesting dink kick. And it goes into it straight into touch. Oh. I think there's something. The, the bearings of the Impis end in open play have not yet been found by their kickers. Yeah, the, the execution for Impis, especially in regards to kicking, whether it's... Uh, uh, th th actually, they have had one attempt for goal. That has been fine. But kicking That's for off the tee. Well, I mean yes, in off open the tee, yeah. Yeah. Kicking in open play for territory has been very, very appalling. And that is something that I, they have to work on. And that is really worrying, especially when you have three playmakers on the pitch. You have Arinaito Stallone, you have Edmond Wire, and then you have Henry Sekuya at 15. So that is something that, <laughs> that they need to clean up quick before this, this game gets out of hand. Yeah, and you saw... Back here. You saw the youngster Davis Shimwa for the second time running hard and quick, uh, that quick press on uh, Stallion Arinaitwe. The first time he got him and Rhinos nearly put some points on the board. But Stallion Arinaitwe was much smarter this time, selling the dummy and making sure that, uh, that Davis Shimwa does not hit him on the weak shoulder and he was able to maintain possession on that play. Very good uh, innovation by Stallion Arinaitwe, but also very good defense from Davis Shimwa to keep his opposite number thinking and on his toes. Yeah, I think uh, Davis Shimwa finds himself in a particular uncharacteristic situation. He has been very comfortable in the 13th shot. Today he finds himself at 12 uh, because of the absence of uh, Nazo, who is usually plays there 12. As we're seeing, Kennedy Muhumza. That was a brown nut. Again. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Kanyewa, to be honest. Uh, feed Stallone and Naitui. Back. A dangerous pass, and Stallone and Naitui is tackled strong, loses the ball forward, and Rhinos, who had the advantage. Okay. Okay. In also trying to play the offloading game, lose the ball and turn over possession yet again. But yeah, yet again, Impis really, as we're hearing what the ref has to say. You've gained tactically, okay? You had the chance to do anything you wanted. Interesting uh, from the center referee, Umar Balikanda, says uh, Arnold Chiza now taking over captain duties, talks to the referee and says, 
we did not gain any advantage of that knock forward. And uh, St. Jerry says you've gained tactically. Is the referee reading tactics for, for the Rhinos and the Impus in this one today? Uh, I think that is a question that he can answer. I think advantage is gained in possession or in territory. And we will get to find out uh, what tactical advantage is on this one. Maybe when you've kicked the ball away is when you lose possession uh, when you lose the advantage but then there you've gained an advantage in territory but as now Impis through Stallone are in start Elise! the attack into yes. the Rhinos have Takla needs to release Elise. and so yeah, now Manuel Sebedandi they are not releasing Captain. in the tackle giving um, Impis a rare attacking opportunity inside the Rhinos half the last time they visited uh, the Rhinos half they got three points uh, Henry Sequoia now has the responsibility to find touch. As you see, uh, Pato, the TM for, for Impis, running onto the pitch with a kicking tee, but Henry Sequoia had already made up his mind to go for the corner. Finds touch for a line out just at the 22-meter territory. It is the first time that Impis are in the Rhinos' 22-meter territory. What can they do with the ball this time? Yeah, they, they have shown to be the, be the more efficient side. Every, uh, when they visited uh, the Rhinos' half, they got the points. So that could give them a bit of encouragement going into this particular attack. And it is another uh, opportunity to test their set piece and to test their structure. What have they been doing during training and how are they going to be able to execute as we are seeing uh, uh, the, the hooker, Mr. Godfrey Ayebare, today who has the responsibility of, of getting that, uh, that throw right. And uh, unfortunately, the coordination between the thrower and the jumper still evades them. And Paul Kalonji gets an opportunity to have the box kick. And he dummies it. Ooh. And he finds the gap. He's very, very crafty. And uh, <laughs> there we are seeing Joshua Obol running, but forgetting the ball behind. Rhinos still find a way of keeping that ball. And uh, Paul Kalonji passing the ball. And it is going to be by our dong there. Bayo Dong resembles Taco the late guys, Robert Sebuya with that yeah. bold haircut for now. Yeah, now that you have spoken about it, I really see the resemblance. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. As uh, Henry Sequia tries to clean up, and uh, Imp is really, really scrapping at any at, at, really, at exiting their half, at even controlling the fielding. They are really not having the game they would want to have in this particular uh, opening. Uh, encounter of Guys, this game. It's midway the through five. the first half. Reynolds, or closer to the, the halftime break. Reynolds have out. played out. almost Reynolds, 30 minutes out. or almost uh, 20 plus out minutes the in their own territory. And even closer to their own, to their own area. Guys, uh, and now they have a goal line drop. Edmund Wire needs to know this time that he cannot behind. kick it straight out. Okay. Since it is a dropout. And he does very well with that. Finds Owen Kinyera with Emmanuel Kwebikanga running on the outside, but Owen Kinyera goes alone, tackled Taco. by David Aniko, releases and gets back on his feet, brought down Taco. by Gabriel Bejuka. And now, Paul Kalunji finds Francis Mukundane, who does not need to pass, but Taco. he is tackled by Ariho Muhumuza. So the two young men went to Tari School that's for their high school, and that's where they began their rugby Nine careers. Months. And what a face off that was from the two forwards. Now, Rhinos pull Kalonji, fumbles that ball on the floor as he attempts to play it to the open side. And Impis now have another scrum. Yeah, it's a case of a lot of inefficiency from both sides. And uh, you could say it was a perfect opportunity after Impis having scrambled there. And Rhinos had them, you could say, <laughs> by, by the throat. And they were unable to punish, and on so many occasions, they have not been able to punish the mistakes that the Impis have made. Okay. So that is, Bro. I think, the one uh, thing that you can say that Impis will take into the halftime, that they, they are Fine. still in this game regardless of so many mistakes Such. and so much uh, territorial disadvantage on their end. But what can they do to be able to change that narrative? Davis Shima, they are playing what appears to be like a limp there as uh, Kennedy Mahomes uh, kicks the ball just above him. And now found by Owen Kinyera, tackled very well Open by, by Kennedy Mahomes, turned over by Emmanuel Sediabane. <laughs> Jeremy Tembo is the first at the breakdown, and he earns that turnover on Emmanuel Sediabane, the first to arrive at the breakdown. And now Musa Bulega on a quick restart. He's running behind the impis area, selling the first dummy and the second one. Will you go all the way? He's tackled by Henry Sekuye into touch. But he stays on the floor, and he's picked up by his... Uh, 
<laughs> interesting show and go there by, Mo, uh, by Musa Bulega as he was moving, uh, showing this side, I'm going to switch, I'm going to offload, and fooling the defense and getting some very good meters, regardless of the fact that his efforts ended with a, with a thumping tackle into touch, into touch by... That, but by, that's, uh, a gain, that's a gain in territory. Uh, yeah. We were talking about gains. That is not a technical advantage. That's a gain in territory. <laughs> that's not a tactical advantage. That's a gain in territory. Over, I could say, 40 meters... 40 yeah. meter gain in, ter in territory. Possession is turned over, but Demo it is in a uh, dangerous territory for Impis, who will certainly be kicking the ball back into their own hands as we have an injury break this time for Wayne Kinyera, who has no, given a tip tackle and appeared to have landed dangerously uh, after, after that tackle by, by Kennedy Mohumuza. Yeah, I think the Rhinos will be uh, comfortable being uh, defending in this particular situation, also knowing that uh, Godfrey Ayavari hasn't uh, had the best of, uh, of throws, so they could be able to win that ball back and have another attack. As you're seeing, Owen Pinera there, um, he seems to be getting... Uh, um, I think it's a case of blood, and he's, yeah, he's he having it cleaned. Sub. I think it's a nosebleed. Ah, but uh, credit to the medical uh, team that is always there, prompt to make sure that all the players and their welfare is in shape. To Fans make sure that they are, are beginning to make their way to Legends Rugby Club for, a, I've called it, I think in my, in my opinion, this is going to be one of the toughest games we shall have probably this season. The two teams going to play later, that is uh, Cobbs and Pirates, have matters to settle between themselves not just off the pitch not just on the pitch but also off the pitch and i can't wait for this one the fans have thrown legends rugby legends rugby club they're enjoying a fair share of uh, the league unmatched and and unmatched in gold product the nile special beer and we have some beautiful action coming our way yeah as you're seeing the fans really enjoying themselves and uh, uh, like you say, they're now starting to really get in. The weather is good for shots. If you're yeah, leg day. the leg day <laughs> and, uh, and and the sneakers, it is really really good. But you you talked about the the, the, the next game that's coming up, Cubs and Pirates. The band has been going on all week, and uh, you could say Pirates has been a little uh, confident and borderline cocky, I should say. The, the, the Cubs camp has been necessarily, or you could say, uncharacteristically quiet. Uh, I think it's off that loss to heathens. They, they, they are a bit uh, cautious about their words. I, think <laughs> I found it unusual that uh, all the banter that we've seen on yeah. the internet has yeah. been coming from uh, has been coming from only one side, and that's with uh, that's that's with the pirates. Cobbs, I think they've opted to do the talking on the pitch. And right there, you see Gabriel Redo speaking to journalist uh, Julius Senyimba. Gabriel Redo is injured. He was unable to join his team injured and is also ill is unable to travel with his team the warriors to entebbe for that encounter against the mongas but he has made he has made his way to legends rugby club to support his uh, younger brother joseph aredo's team joseph aredo is also missing for for the courts later today so it's uh today we're not seeing the aredo's in action but surely we'll be seeing them cheering uh, their little brother's team as uh, owen kinyera playing now with some uh, some cotton in his nose finds some grass behind Roland Wokorach Roland Wokorach on the chase with Jerome with <laughs> Stefan Kalesi who that was, that was the a case touch. of not understanding the rules I should say but it and is uh, half time now so he's a very lucky man <laughs> he's saved by the whistle but this is the thing you always say that Rugby is a very, very easy sport if you understand, if you understand the rules. The regulations, without a doubt. <laughs> because um, if it wasn't for that, they would have been getting territory back exactly where Owen Kinera had kicked from. And luckily enough, it's now it was going to change the call there. Either way, if the ball had gone into touch, it would have still been halftime either way. So. No, that's, that's the only thing that has really saved that particular situation. So should we say he was aware that it was last play? I could say, yeah, we should assume that. But it's okay, halftime here at Legends <laughs> Rugby Club. Rhinos leading five... To three for Impis in the first game that we shall have at this venue. Later we shall have, like we were saying, Cobbs taking on the Black Pirates in the top of the table clash. But we also have some action going on away from uh, this venue. We have Mongas taking on the Warriors in Entebbe and the Ginger Hippos hosting the Heathens at the Dam Waters Rugby Club. We'll be getting some scores and updates from those venues, but you can see the fans yeah. beginning to fill up this place, especially for the Impis.
Yeah, I think it's, a, it's, it's, it's really high time we started a, a Where Your Local Rugby jersey campaign for, uh, for, for rugby teams Yeah, as it would well. be very nice, but the first thing that the teams will need to work on, I think before I stop, I stop you in your tracks, is we need to have the jerseys available for us. We have some new kit coming through for Heathens. They are the yellow machine, but they are still green for now. So probably when their jersey comes, we'll be seeing more fans uh, turning up and wearing uh, that kit. Uh, Warriors are said to be bringing a new kit as well. Impis also announced that they will be bringing a new kit for this season. So yes, I agree with you that where are your local Jose campaign is a good one. I think next Friday I will be wearing my uh, Ginger Hippos Jose or my Impis uh, Jose, which I got from uh, the team at uh, Giordano. A beautiful kit. And uh, we can look even smarter in our kit and enjoy our beer like that couple they are trying to discuss yeah. the rugby enjoying an aisle special could they be really discussing the tactical nuance of 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 the of the game with, with like the maybe having an analysis like we just did with the way she's uh, moving her hands <laughs> i think she's explaining <laughs> that would be couple corner. goals that would really be couple goals <laughs> <laughs> as we're seeing some fun activations now happening let's uh, see who has the quicker kick dungu there He's smarter, but he's not quick enough. He's at the back. Oh, there's someone has knocked the ball forward and kicked it all the way into touch. Oh, I think we have a winner here for sure. But yeah, I would but have loved Dungu Joseph, the, <laughs> one of the officials at Cobbs, to win this one because he would have been a very happy man going into his team's encounter against the Black Pirates. Yeah, but um, this, this activity is really a, a something that puts a smile on my face because many times when you're a fan and you sit in the stands, you're like, the player should have done this, the player should have done that. But you get this opportunity to see that it is not as easy as maybe pressing X on a, on a video game. So heathens are leading from Ginger. They are leading in Ginger, 17 nil against the Hippos. Mm. Yeah. What do you think yeah. about that one? Yeah, interesting. I'm sure they were very, very uh, cautious having uh, saw what happened in the first game week against the Pirates and also the obliterating of the, the Warriors last weekend. So they are going to Ginger knowing that they are not just playing um, the, the, the Hippos of two or three seasons ago, but now playing a, a more mature, more efficient Hippos. So they are really treating it like a... Uh, like like a threat, and yeah, that is what you're seeing at halftime. Yeah, they have approached this one with, an, they have killed by strangling, 17 nil, probably about halftime as well, and uh, they are surely running away with this one. I hope uh, we will, uh, I expect that, uh, I initially I expected Ginger Hippos to be a much stiffer challenge against the, the Heathens, but uh, the result does not tell that story, and uh, there's, there's, But we have some action happening here. What does it take to win gold? Ours is the result of what we put in. Only the best ingredients and only the freshest water drawn from the source. What then does it take to win 21 gold awards? A special kind of consistency. One we've observed since 1956 to deliver a distinctly Ugandan taste. That is what makes Nile special. A beer truly made of Uganda, unmatched in quality and unmatched in gold. One beer, 21 Mond Selection Quality Awards. The true Ugandan reward from the source. Alcohol isn't for sale to persons under the age of 18. Please drink responsibly. What does it take to win gold? Ours is the result of what we put in. Only the best ingredients and only the freshest water drawn from the source. What then does it take to win 21 gold awards? A special kind of consistency. One we've observed since 1956 to deliver a distinctly Ugandan taste. That is what makes Nile special. A beer truly made of Uganda. Unmatched in quality and Unmatched in gold. One beer, 21 Mond Selection Quality Awards. 
the true Ugandan reward from the source. Alcohol isn't for sale to persons under the age of 18. Please drink responsibly. back for the second half. We had uh, center referee Umar Balikanda earlier uh, getting some clari clarity from getting some clarity from, from the team captains, both captains, and also passing on some uh, instructions to them for the second half. But we are back and Musa Bolega makes a much better punt for this one than Henry did for kickoff today and Jerome Tasiku returns the favor with a very nice kick for territory into touch for Impis to clear their area but also for Rhinos to be to get that starting platform. Um, I find it interesting that teams opt to begin the game like this. It's the safest option but it also gives the attacking team or rather defending team the first option to attack uh, once, once play gets ongoing. Line out by Emmanuel Sebi Dandi. 
on to Paul Kalonji. Emmanuel Sediabane leaving his lines early. And yet again, Francis Mukondane meeting Ariro Muhumuza. And this time, it's a much better tackle by Ariro Muhumuza. Now, Musa Bulega looking for some grass behind Jonathan Lohoni. He finds it. Does he find touch as well? Yes, he does. Jonathan Lohoni does not opt for the quick line out. And it will be a throw for Impis just outside their own 22-meter territory. For clarity on this one, once the ball is passed to the number nine, it will have been taken back into the 22. And any kick into touch, direct into touch, will be no gain in territory and certainly no gain in position. And you see the sun starting to creep out, giving us that uh, usual midday to 1 p.m., 2, 2 p.m. kind of heat and uh, sunshine. So, yeah, that's another thing that maybe the teams will have to contend with as uh, Arnold Kalunji there, line out stolen, and it's another attacking opportunity. Ball to Davis Shimwa. Davis Shimwa passes the ball out wide. Alvin Lutwama, unfortunately, unable to hold the ball when he needed to really have it in his hands. I think it's a case of being overly eager to, to, to go and score the try before you even hold the ball. And, uh, Alvin Lutwama could have uh, covered that pass much better. It could have been a better pass from Davis Shimwa as the two give each other high fives for that attempt to play. But they could have certainly done better because that was a, a clean scoring opportunity for the Rhinos. Yeah, luckily enough, they were playing advantage, so it's going to be a penalty for them. Arnold Kiza, who was uh, just ca he came on for the injured uh, Billy Ochen, and he took over the captaincy. Now another responsibility he has to have in his, in his forte is uh, to be able to kick for points. As uh, the Hall of Legends goes silent to respect the kicker, can he be able to reward them with... Um, a properly executed one and uh, he finds his bearings and it's the rhinos extending their score here in this particular one eight for the rhinos and three still for the impis so it's a five point deficit there that the impis have to overcome but the rhinos starting to at least uh, put some breathing space between themselves and uh, the, the visiting team here at legends as easy as the kicks come Arnold Kiza finding the uprights and splitting them to turn the score from 5-3 at the break to 8-3, meaning that Impis will need to score to level matters. And if they convert that kick, they take the lead. Very good chase by uh, David Aniku, and it slows forward. But Kelvin Ampere, which is a scrum uh, for Impis just inside... Uh, inside the Rhinos territory, but uh, that, that chase was very good from David and he could put some pressure on the defense and uh, force a turnover. Yeah, definitely. The, the, the kick is never, uh, as, is never a good kick until there is a very good, uh, uh, an equally good chase on it. So, yeah, there you can see Impis, after conceding those three points down, they get an opportunity to have something. I'm sure Emma, Emma Katuntu will not be happy here um, to see the absence in urgency, the absence in efficiency in the way his team is playing. And I think it's important to note um, a person that is missing for the Impis is a pass Imposer, a man that brings so much energy both in ball carrying and in the tackling department. Yeah, I think he will be waiting for his opportunity to come on. He's uh, finished warming in halftime and he's uh, across the pitch. If you think you will be able to see on this subsequent play, you will see him uh, lacing up, uh, tightening his, uh, his shorts and uh, getting ready to come on uh, for a piece of action in this one. I think he will be coming on probably for uh, play Zocheng or, or any of the loose forwards for Impis as Kennedy Mahomes and now carries his team forward. They carry into the 22. They're playing advantage in peace. Choose not to take it as Terrell Nightway decides late to go for that one. But uh, Kennedy Muhumza calls for some sanity. Ariho Muhumza decides that I will be carrying this one. And he goes in all alone, brought down. And turned over possession. He went in alone, tackled by uh, 
Kevin Ampire and uh, that he could have done better there because now Rhinos have the possession. It's a, it's a it's a penalty, so they will throw and it's still there. It's still there, boys. You could think with that penalty that the Impis got, why did they go for points? It's that decision making. I think could have been better. And as uh, Jerome Tasiku attempts to keep the ball in play, yes, he does. The flag went up, but the center referee said it was okay. And Henry Sequia sends an up and under that will be gathered by Davis Shima. No, he won't. He has uh, fumbled that when it slips through his grip onto his chest and through all the way down to the floor. That's a knock forward. And Edmund Wire tells his uh, backline to relax and come down. If he's going to get a chance now to attack. I have been in such, in, in, in such similar situations that there is. Uh, there are very few things that give you more joy than, uh, than putting, up an, uh, putting a kick, an up and under kick, and then seeing the recipient drop it or fumble it. It is... It is so rewarding, and it's something that if you have not experienced it, uh, I can't really explain it to you, but I'm sure the gratification uh, Henry Sequia is feeling in that particular moment to get position in an attacking platform for the Impis is uh, something that he will be proud of. All right. Jerome Tasiko feeds. Carried by Emmanuel Sedabana, but slapped down. He says he was slapped down, but he loses it forward, and... Kennedy Mahumza plays the ball from forward, from a forward position, and possession has been turned over for offside as Musa Bolega attempts to walk into the Impis defense, is brought, is tackled by a Pius Mposa off the bench, but Rhinos still have possession, and they are attacking on the right flank of the pitch. Ball somehow finds its way through off the floor, and center referee says there's a high tackle there. Musa Bolega still toying with the Impis defense. is now tackled. Just outside the 22, pull Kalunji onto Billy, onto Zakaria ball rather. Rockwell secured, but it's a slow ball for Kalunji. Who finds now Owen Kinyera. Owen Kinyera dancing in between the two Impis midfielders is brought down, and Robert Sentongo is attempting to get the turnover with the Jacko. Not successful. And now Francis Mohomza finds Zakaria ball. Turned over by Pius Mposa, but center referee Umar Balikanda says the Taklan needs to release Gabriel Bejuka there. And, and you can see Gabriel Mugabe there needs to release the ball carrier. Poor Kalunji pointing straight to the points. And it's going to be another at attempt for Arnold Chiza to be able to extend this lead for the rhinos put themselves in a comfortable situation can he be able to get the uh, the, the direction and the bearings right and the distance as well more importantly we're seeing he has a, a strapped knee that is uh, one of the aspects that usually affects kickers because it is one of the joints that is very actively involved in the kicking process we hope it won't deter him from getting the extra and yet again the legends goes silent as Arnold Kiza assesses and having the, dire the distance but not having the direction. So the score remains as 8-3 with a 22-meter dropout for the Impis. And a 22 meter, 22 meter drop out there by uh, Edmund Wire sends the ball long, and that is Jeremy Tembo trying to get some extra meters. He's able to break the first tackle, and very, very good. The Rhinos find themselves yet again back in the Impis half, and it's patient play there. A case of a physical contest and another penalty, and. Someone is surely going to the bin at this particular instant, I think. Yeah, yeah without a doubt, someone's going to the bin. Stalin Ainaitu there for the high tackle. He's going to the bin while limping. You could say it's a case of a double whammy there. <laughs> He's been punished twice. And uh, yet again, the Rhinos are going to attempt um, 
the kick, but we hope that Stellan Arineto is fine. We're seeing the medical team coming to uh, attend to him as... In the same bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is not a medical break. It's just uh, a man going onto the sin bin, but still getting his attention. As Arnold Kisa... Kisa Yet again, Arnold Kiza unable to do what he did again with his first attempt. His, his ratio is now at, uh, at one, one successful kick for three. And yet again, the score remains 8-3, which means that it is still a very, very close contestable game. But one thing that the Impis need to do is how do they get themselves into the Rhinos half and how do they be able to get themselves in an attacking platform. Interesting short kick this time round. Emmanuel Sedabane gathers and he sets up. Jerome Tasiku picks. <laughs> Referee says ball is open and yet again Rhinos have been able to Rhinos have been able to turn it over and now they are trying to create something. Davis Shimwa sends the ball out wide and it's uh, not the best of kicks there from the, the Rhinos winger. That is Emma Kwebikanga and uh, yet again now the Impis get possession. Possession has been switching between the two sides. It's a, uh, a topsy-turvy situation as uh, Henry Sekuye puts force to the, bo to the ball and it's deep and uh, uh, Owen Kinera there, effecting the counter-attack, patient play there, as the Rhinos try to set it up. Rhinos have had answers to all the questions that the Impis have given them thus far in this second half, as uh, Zakaria Ball there, trying to carry extra patient play there by Poo Kalunji, who's trying to slow down the game and make sure there's full control. A bit of an, uh, an, uh, a very harsh pass there, but uh, credit to uh, Baya Odong, who is able to show that he's uh, forward, but he has good hands. But on the next attempt, turnover, and we're seeing Pius Imposa bringing his energy into this game. Quick start, and now there's an advantage there for cynical play. Impis finally get back into the Rhinos half and lose the ball, but they have been playing advantage, so it goes down to the penalty. What do they do? We saw um, uh, Henry Sekuye kicking in the first half, a long-range kick. Do they go for the kick yet again, or do they kick out for touch? What are they going to be able to effect? I think it is uh, Henry Sekuye calling for the corn, so it's going to be a kick at goal. Can he be able to get the extra points and maybe um, reduce on the deficit and leave it at two? Let us wait and see if... Uh, he has his bearings right. He takes off his headgear to have maximum focus and concentration. Henry Sekui, a very, very versatile player. Plays across the board in the back line. He has been featuring in the number 10 shot. Today he's at fullback, but his leadership and his experience in this team is one that is really, really worthy. And yet again, Kickers not finding their bearings, right? The distance is okay, but the direction is not good as Alvin Lutuama tries to exit and a very good tackle there by David Aniku. Poo Kalunji trying to dig for the ball, but Emmanuel Sedabani really being a pest at the breakdown there. The youngster, open side flanker for the Impis. Somehow the Rhinos are able to keep their ball and uh, it's a pick and drive there as Rhinos say that you know you can't play if you do not have the ball and finally they give it to Arnold Kiza has a glance ahead and he kicks a long ball David Aniku David Aniku did not look comfortable while the ball was coming and <laughs> the result of that was a knock on a perfect opportunity now for the Rhinos inside the Impis half for the umpteenth time yeah, David Aniku took his eyes off the ball there and while trying to make up his decision on where next he would play he forgot to keep his eyes on the ball, and uh, that was lost forward by uh, 
by Impis uh, gifting the rhinos a very, very good opportunity to clear their own area and now even attack closer to the Impis territory. Paul Kalunji trying to play a slow ball was not able to deliver the cleanest of balls to his to his on rushing forwards, but let's see if he has relaxed a bit just after this scrum. Jeremy Temba with the ball at his feet. Paul Kalonji carrying, gives a high ball to Davis Shima, running the loop and a very nice chicken wing pass to Musa Bulega, who is in the gap. Stuckled by jo Jonathan Lohoni as Henry Sekuyo ran over the ball to try and, and make an intercept. It is sent back into the 22 and Owen Kinyera regathers as he retreats back. Now, against his opposite number, Henry Sekuye beats him for pace. He's tackled by Roland Wokorach. And now Rhinos are back knocking at the Impis gate. Paul Kalunji slow ball as we were talking about that. And now David Se Sevi Dandy, Derek Sevi Dandy dancing. Just on that carry, he sends it just outside the 22. Now Francis Mokondani up against Homes are the two have enjoyed running and carrying into each other. The ball is lost forward there, and now Impis very strong defense on that breakdown have earned the turnover against the Rhinos. Jerome Tasiku to feed. Picked by Pius Imposa. Brought down by Kevin Ampire. And now David Aniko with the ball in his hand. Fends off Kevin Ampire. And he was a high tackle, says the referee. Now Jerome Tasiku. Pius Imposa caught behind the gain line. Impis now. Playing the loose ball, Davis Shima is the first at that breakdown, but there's no advantage gained for that high tackle on David Aniku. And Kennedy Mahomes will be looking for a come play. He opts for touch. Henry Sekuye with the task of finding touch for the Rhinos in this one. But what a carry and sidestep from David Aniku to break and play behind the Rhinos gain line. Does Henry Sekuye find touch? Yes, he does. Not just by himself. But as Owen Kinyer attempted to keep the ball in play, he put his foot on the ground, on the grass in touch. And Impis have very good territory there. What, what a kick that was. Uh, I get again from, from Henry Sequoia, but even made even more beautiful by uh, that attempt to keep it in play by Owen Kinyera. Omar Balikanda checks his clock to allow Emmanuel Sidiabani to lace up his boots. Time is back on. Impis appear to be making plans for a crafty move here. The dummy curry, Kennedy Mahumza is in the air, but the ball comes late and it's turned over by the Rhinos. But what a turnover there by uh, Kennedy Mahumza on that curry. Charged for having held on. Emmanuel Sediamani cuts back inside. He dances around the Rhinos' defense. The Impis have a chance to level matters here or even take the lead. Gabriel Mugabe on the PD, inching closer to the trial and go Impis. Another carry there. This time it's Kennedy Muhumuza. And now Pius Imposa is on the ball. He goes to the blind side. It's a mole. But the tackler needs to release Pius Mposa having put his feet on the floor. It was a tackle. He had to be released. And Impis continue to attack this time. It's Arivo Mahomza with the ball in his hands with Gabriel Mugabe. They appear to be making up a wage. He goes to the blind side. He's brought down by the Rhinos defense. Knocking Impis core now. 
Pius Mposa. It's a carry inside even further. The Rhinos have held up. Let's see who had the ball down there. Have held up Pius Mposa. They have a goal line dropout. The beautiful defense there from the Rhinos. And even equally impressive attack from the Impis who will need to put some points on the board to stay in contention for this one. Arnold Kiza with the ball in hand. He will need to clear his line, but make sure that the ball finds touch on the field before it bounces off. Otherwise, they will be back for a scrum at the five-meter line. He hoofs it just inside his own turn. Finds Jerome Tasiku. Jerome Tasiku has Henry Nsekui and Jonathan Lohoni on his outside. Carries Henry on the dummy. Cuts back inside. Bounces off one tackle. Throws a loose pass. Throw the loose pass to Emma Kolikanga. Emma Kolikanga dancing his way past the Rhinos, de the Impus defense. Alvin Lutama with a nice switch to Paul Kalonji. Will you go all the way? No, you won't. Tackled into touch by Jonathan Lohoni. What a tackle by Jonathan Lohoni. But equally impressive is that curry and loop run by Paul Kalonji. Yeah, but the interchange between uh, from the, that was started by uh, Emma, Emma Kwebikanga and then uh, Alvin Lutwama with the interesting uh, outside loop and then Paul Kalonji trying to put on the afterburners with the sports day but uh, uh, Jonathan Lohoni having the perfect response at the perfect time there and you can see the fans are really really thrilled by the action that they're seeing. What a, what a, a good uh, case of action there but Impis now have the responsibility to be able to exit their half. What can they be able to do? Having survived that, that attack, that surge they know they're they still not where they want to be on the scoreboard, so they need to really get points on board. Many of the fans are still coming in, as you can see, at the far end of the pitch. The Cobs are also uh, making their way onto the pitch to be able to start their warm-up. Remember, they play next year at Legends Rugby Grounds, but all that action is going to be here at Kao, so make sure you have enough now special and you have enough data to be able to go through this particular game. And a very good kick there. Finding touch. It's going to be a line out to the Rhinos. The Rhinos have really, really camped in the Impis half. They just need to find their efficiency. On the other hand, the Impis have not had the hunger and the intensity they had in game week one and game week two. We wonder what the issue could be in a game that uh, is still very, very close. A try, a converted try for the Impis could see them go into the lead. But any score for the Rhinos at this moment could really see them expand and give themselves some breathing space. That by our dong gentleman resembles Robert Seguia. I, I, I cannot unsee it. And he plays not as uh, the legendary Seguia, but he plays maybe just a bit as uh, Gabriel Mugabe sells a few dummies, the prop. I like props that are... Uh, that have some shows of skill. And now Pius Mposa on the pick goes to the blind side. Will he be carried into touch? No, he won't. Contested at that breakdown, but well secured. And now Jerome Tasiku needs to make sure he doesn't go into touch. The rock was secured, says the referee. But the Rhinos need to release at that point. Pius Mposa on the quick restart. He is isolated, finds Belezo Chengash. Takla needs to roll away. But this time the opportunity for the quick restart is is halted to allow for the treatment of Joshua Ball, who has taken off his boots. Uh, has he hurt his ankles or is he not feeling well? Joshua Ball there, one of the very great servants of this, this club, been a big, big part of their resurgence from a time when they were really struggling uh, to try and get back into their usual rhinos of old. They, this is a team that contested for, for the trophy a couple of seasons back and lost out narrowly to the then champions, the Pirates. And then, unfortunately, went on a downward slump. But we can see the fans. It's great to see the, the, the very well-dressed fans, the ladies and the gentlemen, 
many of them enjoying their now special as uh, Henry Sequier will be attempting another long-range kick to try and get his team back into it. They have not seemed to have the spark in attack when it comes to ball in hand and trying to find the try. But they can't stop giving up. They know they need to at least get some points on board, and that is what they are trying to effect with the penalty. And yet again, silence from the Legends rugby grounds. Henry Sekouye having, does he have it all? No, he does not have the distance this time around. He has the direction. So it's, it's just a case of having one and not the other in different situations. As now, Rhinos yet again try to move as Emmanuel Okui has come on at scrum half for the Rhinos. A man that played his rugby in, uh, in Namiliango College. Patient play there, and uh, Musa Bulega going for the kick, looking for space, and Pius Imposa being found in uncharacteristic uh, territory, or you say location, taking his sweet time, and the chase was very good from Emma Kwebikanga, and that has been the one thing that Rhinos has really done well, the chase on every kick they have had, and they find themselves, at least you'd rather defend inside your opposition's half rather than in your own half, and that is what they have done. Put the pressure on the Impis in their own half. Impis now trying to be able to get themselves out and uh, knock on yet again, and that is the pressure we have been talking about, that it has led the Rhinos to now get a ball off that knock on. It's going to be a scrum to the Rhinos. Can they be able to put this game to bed? Having uh, seen Impis on very many occasions, not convert their penalties. So it is an opportunity now for the Rhinos to really have this game in their full control, both on the scoreboard and in actual play of the game. As we approach the end of this game, remember this is one of two epic encounters, the second being the, the Betway Cobs. Actually, the Cobs are uh, no longer sponsored by uh, Betway at the moment. Um, hosting the Stambic Black Pirates and teams on either side, either far end of the pitch are actually warming up and preparing for the next game which kicks off at 3 p.m. Rhinos seem to have lost their ball and it is Impis yet again with a get out of jail card. What can they be able to do with what they have? Patient play there and ball goes to Edmund White. This time he fakes it and decides to run. The big man plays at 10, plays at 12 and Jonathan Luhoni with a big hit. Oh my God, what a big hit there from Jonathan Luhoni. He's a winger, interestingly so. He's wearing the shirt number 8 jersey. And uh, we're seeing there... And another penalty called by the referee. An infringement at the breakdown there, and it's advantage to the to the Impis. They're at least getting something going for them now. We haven't seen too much of Jonathan Luoni in attack, and that, I think, has been one of the issues, because uh, as their handbags at the far end of the pitch, we knew that this game at some point would really have uh, emotions boiling down, with team both teams thinking that they can really handle each other, and... Uh, now the emotions, and you can see the two technical benches really trying to uh, separate the guys and telling them, no, this is not the time to start fighting. Impis doesn't need to really be getting into this because they need to focus on getting back into this game. Same thing for the Rhinos. They don't need to be carried away by emotions. Game management is key in what they are trying to do in this particular game. And uh, it's just a case of uh, passionate rugby players, passionate young rugby players trying to... Um, uh, embrace each other through what we usually call handbags. And we're seeing a, a, another player down, and the uh, medical team is, is really trying to attend to him. But you can see both sides of, of players appealing to the referee and arguing their case. And uh, in, you wouldn't want to be the referee in that particular situation, especially if you have not assessed what is fully happening there and not give the right call, because both, both teams seem to have um, their own agenda. You called it embracing. Uh, that's uh, quite uh, <laughs> an interesting choice of, of verb. I think there's nothing about embracing there as uh, the handbags were swinging. But um, just uh, a technical update. We've lost the referee's footage uh, being resolved. And once we uh, get it fixed, we shall be able to get to hear what's going on on the pitch and uh, the calls that are being made. But across the pitch, you can see the Black Pirates in their pretty much Let's call them rituals as they are dancing and summoning uh, 
summoning their gods, I could say, at sea as they attempt to to take on the Betway Cobs across the pitch, the Cobs rather, who are still in uh, the individual warm-ups. Uh, the Black Pirates are doing more of the psyching up like their fans did and uh, the Cobs on the other hand are still doing a little bit more of the quiet work. But uh, on the pitch we have Rhinos in, uh, with an 8-3 lead against the Impis. We had a late kickoff in Entebbe between the Warriors between the Warriors and the Mongas. Uh, the game has just kicked off after a delay. We are yet to confirm what caused the delay, but uh, the game is underway there, and uh, we should be well inside the second half uh, with the game in Ginger uh, between Heathens and uh, and the Ginger Hippos, as Henry Sequier goes for points again for Impis after that after that long break that uh, had a few players like Ruben said and the technical bench embracing themselves. Henry Sequier. Oh, the kicking today has been below par, and he sends this one short and just a little bit wide. And now the Rhinos on to attack. Henry Sequia with a tackle. He did not get enough time to put his headgear on as the Rhinos were staging a counter-attack. He runs back and leaves his headgear on the floor to cover the ground. But uh, David Aniko is there. Can he pick the ball well this time? No, he doesn't. And it was kicked straight into touch by Paul Kalunji on the box kick there. And so there will be a line out from uh, where he, from the line where he kicked the ball from, and Henry Sequia can re can re can pick his headgear, but also for Rhinos, for Impis to throw a very good line out uh, in this one. Slow by by Impis on this one, Godfrey Ayevari still with the task of throwing very good balls for his uh, explosive loose forwards. Let's see who between Kennedy Muhumuza and uh, Emmanuel Sediabane will be going up in the air. It's Kennedy Muhumuza at two, no contest by the Rhinos. The ball has been knocked forward there by substitute Keith Weraga and oh, the <laughs> some of his first moments in this game haven't gone well. But this is one that will surely hurt him. It was a very clean ball from, from the line out, but uh, he fumbled that one and uh, position has been turned over. Impis are on the back foot. They are still within the losing bonus point, but surely they are looking for this win today. Pull Kalonji to fit very good ball there for Jeremy Tembo to pick, who now sends it to his number 10, Arnold Kiza with Davis Shima running the dummy line. E Emmanuel Kwebikanga receives a poor pass and gives Stallon Arnai to a football sliding tackle. Ball is gathered by Jonathan Lohoni, beats Alvin Lutuama, now beats the second man, is running ring roads through the Rhinos defense. Tackled by Billy O'Chen, tackled by Zekaria Ball, rather. But that was a knock forward by Emmanuel Kwebikanga, and that's where the advantage is being played. Referee is on the mark, calls a scrum for scrum feed for Impis. But this time, surely, Impis need to put some points on the board, don't they? Yeah, definitely. Impis uh, have n uh, not really been successful in any of the attempts beat open play attack or uh, kick at goal but they need to do something they have a deficit of five points which can be really usurped by just two penalties that could uh, see them at least get ahead by one point but they have failed to put anything on on board ever since that brilliant kick that henry sequia put in we're seeing keith Raga now at scrum half in for jerome tasiku Jerome Tesiku seems to have moved to outside center, if I'm not mistaken. There's a bit of a, an advantage, but very good. The scrum has done its job there, but I think at this, at this point, uh, we're seeing Pius Impoza calling for yet another scrum. 
they feel like they can handle the Rhino scrum and they're trying to get themselves in a better kicking situation. But the best option right now with uh, your kickings unable, your kickers unable to find their bearing could be to maybe kick for touch. And that is what uh, Henry Nsekui has chosen to do. He seems to have lost his, uh, his headgear, but he finds very good touch inside the... Uh, inside the, the Rhinos half. Can they be able to stun the Rhinos and maybe draw level? If they score a try, they can be able to go eight up and if they get the conversion, then they can be able to lead. But the home team is holding strong. The home team also will be found guilty for not putting this game to bed. For all the position they have had, for all the territory they have had, they have not been able to actually get to, to extend that score. They have scored one penalty and they have scored one try. Uh, for the, all the opportunities they had, they surely should be far ahead in this game. And very good uh, line out there uh, gathered by uh, Kennedy Muhumuza. Keith Weraga is digging deep and patiently moves the ball out wide and it is Edmund Wire for the back in and it's Gabriel Mugabe. They are very, very good. And uh, Keith Weraga picking the ball, Edmond Waya starting to move the ball, long pass. And it is Jerome Tasiku, short ball there, brilliant play. You could say it's a case of a high tackle, but let's see if the referee will give the advantage. And Impis now starting to play with a lot more intensity. Did play like that in the first half, haven't played like that for majority of the game, but Edmond Waya seeming to take charge now of the game, moving the ball from one side to the other. Big tackles in defense as well, but tacklers not take, not rolling away. And you can see that is the kind of territory in which you'd like to have a penalty. But now it goes down to decisions. What do you do? If you score your penalty, you, you get to six points. And that is a deficit of two remaining. But how much time that do they have to be able to get? Or do you go for the bold statement and maybe call for a scrum or for a quick tap and maybe try to go for the, for the goal, for, for the try? Salon and Knight were called for the scrum, but Keith Weraga and Henry Sekui are pointing for the uprights. They are choosing to go for the three points. Three is better than five, is better than, is better than seven. And so they can keep the scoreboard ticking and maybe they have a chance to take the lead for any other opportunity as they play. And the flags go up. It's now the next team to score, especially if it is in peace. They will take the lead. Henry Sekui makes it a two-point game with that kick. Eight-six Rhinos still in the lead here at Legends Rugby Grounds. But... That was some beautiful rugby there from uh, from Ipis on that first play. Uh, long ball out by uh, Keith Weraga finds Stallone Arenaito who feeds the subway with a very short ball. And from then on, they were playing behind the gain line against the Rhinos. And they were able to get that penalty for Taklano rolling away. And they put some points on the board. Yeah, at least uh, we have seen a semblance of, uh, of, of structure from the Ipis. And we're seeing Edmund Wire getting out of his shell and now taking control of the game and you could see what came out of it nail biting moments there and you can see the fans um those are rhinos fans i'm very very familiar with those faces and they are now worried a game that should have been in bed for them now has has a navy ending to it as stallone Ari nightway who has embraced that number 12 shot for impis gets into contact and now they set up there henry sequoia He's going to be looking for a, a much deeper kick. And Paul Karunji, does he have enough time? The big tackle. Henry Sekuye chases his own kick and effects a very, very big tackle there on Paul Karunji. Much to the jubilation of the fans. I don't know why fans like violence, but <laughs> that was brilliant stuff there. Kicking and chasing your own kick. Brilliant stuff by Henry Sekuye. Very good decision making by uh, Henry Sekuye. Kicks are very high and uh, short. Up and under for Paul Kalunji together. Makes the tackle. Paul Kalunji loses the ball in contact. But it's not just about that turn of possession. It's about that change in momentum that now Impis have. And with this scrum, if they are able to win it, they can uh, play in very good territory against the Rhinos who have, for the past six or so minutes, been playing on the back foot. Yeah, definitely. It's just those small, small moments that switch uh, momentum. And now we can see that we feel like momentum is now with the Impis. Can they be able to win this scrum? And more importantly, can they be able to get better territory? We are seeing a case of uh, uh, early engagement where the Impis uh, players are complaining about early engagement from the Rhinos. Let us see what the ref says. The ref says, uh, let's have the scrum go again. And he's paying a lot more attention there, especially 
the engagement. Keith Loraga there, feeding the ball. Jonathan Lohoni on the blind side. And he breaks about three tackles and gets some considerable ground. Can they be able to secure their own ball? Unfortunately not. And uh, the, yet again there, the Rhinos this time are the ones finding themselves bailed out. Good carry from Jonathan Lohoni, but he was isolated there and holding on to possession. He loses the ball on the turnover from the from the Rhinos. And uh, as Impis are trying to kill the quick play, they are pushed and even further 10 meters as uh, Keith Weraga asks for the clock to be stopped so he can tighten his laces for the last about five or so minutes of play in this one. And looking on is Arnold Chiza who will be going for touch so that Rhinos can attack from, from the line out. Please allow me, uh, Ruben, for the last time in this game to mention that Bayer Odong has such a striking resemblance to to Robert Seguia. I can't the memories of Robert Seguia, I did not have the opportunity to watch him play but uh, I read about him I've seen some highlights I know Bayer Odong still has a long way to come towards uh, the quality that Robert Seguia had but surely if it comes to resemblance he is well within the ranges of Robert Seguia. But let's see how his rhinos will uh, use this attacking platform of the line out inside the Impis 22. Yes, another line out there. As um, at the far end, we're seeing now the fans really, really um, settling in as they wait for even the next game. But enjoying this, the navy moments of this game. And. Yeah, that's Jeremy Tembo there, the eighth man who carries like it's part of his life. And uh, Davis Shimwa, ball out wide, loose pass there, but gathered by Emma Kwebikanga. He's not an easy man to, to tackle, but the turnover there, not protecting, not taking care of your ball when you need to. And the Impis have possession yet again. Henry Sekuye choosing to run the play, and Gabriel Mugabe supporting him. The offload game by the Impis is uh, uh, starting to come into... It's bearing, I should say. And Edmond Weyer gets the ball. He's, uh, he has really enjoyed that long pass. And Pius Imposa damming the switch. This time he gives it out wide. And it is Godfrey Ayebare. And uh, that's Emma, Emmanuel Sedabane there. The forwards working in tandem. And it's advantage for Impis. And that is the kind of energy that Pius Imposa brings to his team. And what they, had, they were missing in the first half. And it's a penalty there. What do they do? Decisions, decisions, decisions. As we are waiting for final communication there, the ref going to speak to Captain Martin Arembe and uh, Henry Sekui also coming to have a word with the ref. He might be going for points. It might be the bold decision, especially with time not being their best ally. Martin Arembe getting the yellow card for his, his uh, uh, cynical play. So now the, the, the Rhinos have to finish this game with 14 men. Henry Sequia making the smart decision to go for points on this one as uh, Martin Arembe, the, the Rhinos captain, suffers the consequences of leading a team that is uh, making repeated infringements. I was saying Henry makes the right decision to go for points knowing that if he kicks this one and it goes through, they take the lead. But most importantly, if it doesn't go through, Rhinos certainly will be kicking the ball back to them. So either way, they retain possession of the ball. But let's see, the most important thing is slicing this ball with the right direction and the right amount of energy to put Impis in the lead of the game for the first time in this one for the second time in this one because they took the lead uh, at 3 nil at the start. And yet again, as the goes the story of the day, Henry Sequoia has missed another kick for points. And this time the chest by uh, Emmanuel, by Derek Sevidandi is the best playing advantage the Rhinos are now for that knock forward the impis players are the first at the breakdown but the tackler needs to release and the turnover has the penalty has been given away for hands in the rock impis there clutching on scroll on straws 
as they try to turn over that position, but what a chase from Emmanuel Kwebikanga to regain possession after that kick on what we thought would be a sure play for Impes. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I think that kick, that uh, chase was by uh, Derek Sebidandi. Uh, but whatever, uh, whatever the case, I think that was uh, a play of the game. It could uh, potentially be the, the reason that Rhinos win this game. And you can see, just as I say that, uh, the game comes to an end. Unfortunately, the, the EPs are unable to take their chances. And uh, the Rhinos were able to hold off that uh, last ditch pressure that was coming from the Impis and get a second win of the Nile Special Rugby Premiership. And you are seeing the fans are enjoying their Nile Special, knowing that it's not over, that there's another blockbuster game coming up. But this has been one, one well-worthy um, game, full of action, full of, of, of nail-biting moments, full of a lot of tense moments. And uh, you, it was worth the watch, I should say. I mentioned it last week, and uh, I think it would be nice to mention it again, that uh, Rhinos is a team that has given the, their opponents the losing bonus point while, uh, while uh, they are playing against uh, a team like, like, like Impis, who are known to stay in this one in the fight for much, much longer. Today, Impis, who got the draw last weekend, have got the losing bonus point, while Rhinos will be very, very happy to walk away with full points from this match. They took the, uh, the eight six win and continue to climb upwards as Impi slowly but steadily slide downwards the table. But what a match of rugby this was. You can see Kevin Nazo uh, off on the sidelines from injury joining his teammates in the celebrations but Impi will be cracking their heads, will be scratching their heads wondering how this win has slipped away from their grip. But most importantly, when they can be able to catch the break and get maximum points from all the games that they play. We are moving forward to the next one. Coming up will be the big game of the day. That's the Cubs hosting the Stan Big Black Pirates in the 3 p.m. kickoff here at Legends Rugby Club. Right, go. Kuvanga, we want to talk to you. 
Dennis, are you at office? Yeah, Raymond is coming. Dennis, you are Raymond. What does it take to win gold? Ours is the result of what we put in. Only the best ingredients and only the freshest water drawn from the source. What then does it take to win 21 gold awards? A special kind of consistency, one we've observed since 1956 to deliver a distinctly Ugandan taste. That is what makes Nile special. A beer truly made of Uganda, unmatched in quality and unmatched in gold. One beer, 21 Mond Selection Quality Awards. The true Ugandan reward from the source. Alcohol isn't for sale to persons under the age of 18. Please drink responsibly.